I'm a cheetah burrito. My pants are made of leather. I find a hot hey there, fellow vegetable nerds. Thanks for hanging out with me once again. Today, I have something really exciting to talk about. It's a little bit different. Um, I know that generally what I do is all uh, very vegetable based, but I had a really fantastic opportunity that I couldn't pass up and I thought I'm really missing another opportunity if I don't share it with people. There is a medieval cooking class going on right now. It starts today and it's called Eating Medieval and the, the, the class is called A Taste of the Past and this is a collaboration between Durham University's Medieval Studies program and the Blackfriars restaurant which is apparently a, a really really old restaurant in England and so it's it's this great collaboration and they're teaching this online class it's all online but there's a couple of interactive videos we had the first one this morning and it was really cool I contacted them and I was like hey I'm gonna be in your class I would love to be able to share some of this with you know the people who watch my channel I was like I I'm a little bitty channel so it's not like I'm you know splashing this out to the the whole world but you know still I want to be mindful of and respectful of inter uh, intellectual property. I know that that might seem a little strange because if we're if we're going to be recreating medieval recipes, you would think, well, I mean, what could be more public domain than medieval recipes? Yes and no. If you, if you look at primary sources, medieval recipes tend to be really simple. There's not a lot of information there. There's not often amounts or really great directions and a lot of times we'll be using things that we might not be able to get our hands on or things that we wouldn't necessarily just put in our bodies anymore things that might be considered potentially toxic and stuff like that so these recipes had to be not just sort of updated but adapted and tested and tried out with various combinations of things to try and get a sense of the original sort of spirit and flavor of these recipes, but in a way that a modern cook could also make. All of that takes work by professionals, by chefs and by historians. And so I wanna be respectful of the work that they put into that. If I put a whole bunch of work into something, I would hope somebody would be so respectful of me as well. So the class is not in the public domain. It had to be paid for. They're going to be doing it again. So if I'm just like, have all the recipes for free, you know, who's gonna pay to take classes? So the the compromise that we struck, they, they were very gracious. And they said, yeah, it's fine to go ahead and make videos, you know, where you talk about the experience of doing the class, but just don't share specific recipes. If that's disappointing, I, I apologize, but this is how it's got to be. But really, it's all about the experience anyway, because part of what this channel is about is, yes, it's about the love of vegetables, but it's also about trying new things and being brave and saying, well, I've never had that before. I don't know if I'm going to like that. Well, let's give it a go. So with that in mind, I have some cool ingredients I've been collecting. Uh, one of the first things that happened after enrollment, oh, I should take a moment to, to say this. I didn't pay for this class myself. I have a very, very generous friend uh, who, who made a gift of it to me. And I, I've, I've told her thank you a thousand times, but I, I feel like if I told her thank you a thousand more times, it would not be enough. I am overwhelmed with, with gratitude for this. I saw it and I posted it on Facebook and I originally had intended to enroll and then I saw that the, the price was just a little bit more than I could really handle right now being unemployed and I was like well you know next time you know I'm sure there'll be other chances and then next thing I know I'm enrolled so it's it, I, I'm just I'm so thankful for this opportunity and so there's a part of me that's like you got to do this so right because like you owe it to her to do this so right, so like stress out and get it perfect. But then I remember with, you know, with my rational brain, you know, she gave this to me so that I would enjoy it, so that I would have a good time. And so stressing out kind of negates all of that. So I'm gonna do the best I can because this ingredients list, wow. <laughs> they sent me this ingredients list and it's so cool, but it's enormous. It is so big. <laughs> And so I wanted to go through some of the uh, ingredients and talk to you about the, just the experience of attempting to source these ingredients. Uh, some of which I had heard of before, some of which I already had because I do collect spices and I collect some unusual things. Some of which I had never heard of in my life and I've been having such a good time reading about them because this is my jam right here. 
I'm gonna take it in stages because there's a lot. I have a little bag here. This is some of my miscellany. I did another video. I don't know what order I'm releasing these in. I'm I'm out of control. I don't I don't know. Some of the herbs that were required. Herbs were hard because our herbs generally you want to have fresh, especially since what what we're gonna be doing a lot of is making fresh herb sauces. So you know, that's kind of going to be a big deal. So if it's a plant that doesn't grow where I live, uh, which some of them were, or if it's a plant that, that could grow, but there's no demand for it, so nobody is growing it, you know, what do I do? Um, so I, I do have a video about that. So I won't repeat the whole thing. So you're going to have to go and watch that. A couple videos about that. So, but this is some of my miscellaneous kind of spices and things. So let's get into this. I made, I wrote myself some notes. I want you to know, because I take this seriously. I wrote myself some notes in my chicken scratch. Um, I did some looking some of this up so I could have a little bit of information to tell you about some of these things. If this is very preliminary looking up, some of it is just straight up Wikipedia. If I were back in school writing a paper about this, this would not cut it, <laughs> but if you know if i start going into like real deep research on any of this i will never return from that rabbit hole i mean i barely escaped wikipedia so you know i'm doing my best so one of the first things i tried to get clever with uh this is garden cress sort of it's garden cress seeds um one of the things on the list was they said that they wanted to have garden cress it's also called mustard cress which apparently is kind of popular in england not so much here i could not find it as a as an herb it's apparently really popular for sprouting so a lot of people grow this as microgreens i attempted to do that uh that's in the other video about the herbs this is what this looks like i I also have some watercress coming. I'm having that delivered from Full Circle. They always have watercress. It's not exactly the same thing, but it's it's gonna be pretty similar-ish. They both have kind of like a little peppery sort of a bite to them. I believe this one was also called peppergrass. You know, I feel like we can kind of approximate that. I have some cinnamon sticks. I already had some, but I you know, figure this is gonna be cinnamon heavy. Medieval cooking had a lot of really interesting and and exotic you know for europe exotic spices obviously if you're from the places where this grows it's not exotic at all it's just the stuff that grows so i figured i should stock up on some extra cinnamon i got some malden sea salt all right i don't know i've been hearing about malden sea salt forever they specified that i should have this so i figured why not you know it's not like i'm not going to use salt i i don't i don't know yet i've never used it so i don't know but people swear by this stuff and I don't know if it's just name recognition or if there genuinely is something to it. From what I hear, it's like oddly uh, triangular shaped or like, like um, pyramidal shaped and that means something. Uh, we'll find out. From what I'm told, it's a finishing salt and you don't necessarily cook with it, you put the salt on afterwards. So, okay, I'm, I'm down with that. In fairness, I was on uh, on the internet just the other day and the discussion of salt came up and somebody was saying that they felt that kosher salt was just hype. You know, oh, just, you know, people use it because the chefs use it. And as a person who is a fairly recent convert to kosher salt, no, I, it's better. It just is, you know? So maybe I will be a convert to the, the fancy. So I don't know, find out. I'm really excited about that though. Dried cumin. I always have cumin in my kitchen, always, always, always. But I didn't have the whole cumin, which was specified, so got some of that. And I'm never gonna be sad to have more cumin in my kitchen. This is a dried herb. I had a very hard time finding this as a fresh herb. It's called Southern Wood, and it's a member of the Artemisia family. It's, a, it's Artemisia abrotanum. So it's a relative of wormwood, which is what you would use for um, absinthe and things like that. One of the other names for it is Lad's Love, which I don't know why. I am I started to look into that and I had to pull myself back. When I go into the internet looking things up, it's like I need a lifeline, like when you go spelunking and you've got like a rope attached to you so that you don't just like fall down a hole forever. Um, so there is a certain point where I think I just kind of hit that, oh, you know, and I had to pull myself back out. I did look for it 
as a fresh herb, it wasn't possible. It is one of the herbs I found as a living plant. You wanna see what southernwood looks like as a plant? It's like, it's like out of Dr. Seuss. So it's a little bit bigger than it was when I got it. I don't really think that's big enough to eat it and not feel like a jerk about it. Um, but it's got some cool, like lighter green growth here. So it's definitely, it's growing. I'm just gonna have to use what I have for now. In some cases, I will just have to completely omit a, a spice or a, an herb. Down the line, I'll try it again if I happen to have that ingredient. You know, this isn't my only opportunity to make these recipes. It's not like they're gonna repossess this knowledge once the class ends. So, and then I'll have something to compare it to. So this is fine, this is fine. Supposedly it has sort of a camphorous smell. You can use parts of it to make yellow dye for wool. Oh, the other thing I found out is apparently the, the dried herb can be used to keep moths away. And one of the French names for this is actually garde-robe, which means like, you know, clothing protector. Because of that, because people would put this in with their clothing and protect it from moths, which is actually super relevant to my interests because I am a knitter and I'm a spinner and I am a person who is infested with moths right now and I hate them so much. I, I can't explain to you the frustration that comes from spending hours and hours and hours spinning wool and then plying your yarn that you made yourself with your little hands and then soaking it and then thwacking it and hanging it and waiting for it to dry and winding it and then finding the perfect project to make with it and then knitting it for hours and hours and hours and you've got this thing that you made from beginning to end and then some moth just comes in and just chows down. Like, oh, there ought to be a law. It's just not even right. So anyway, that was my digression. So my my original thought when I read that was like, oh yay, oh yay, I will just use some of this. But then I remembered it is not cat safe. That's not unpleasant. I tried sniffing the little plant. It just smells like a little plant. It doesn't smell like much in it, you know, yet. Now I don't know if the fact that this isn't a super strong smell is a bad thing. I don't know if it's supposed to be like knocking you down. No, because it's got an expiration date on it. It's not expired. You get two more years. So maybe it's just not that strong until you put it in something. I don't know. A couple of these things came from Amazon. A couple of these things came from another company we'll get into in a sec in a second. But a couple of these came from a local Asian market. And a friend of mine was kind enough to have a virtual outing with me. I am on lockdown. I, I have a lot of reasons to not be out amongst people right now due to COVID. So I'm taking extra, almost paranoid precautions. So I don't go into stores. There's no reason to, to have to go into stores when everything can be delivered. She went to this store and we FaceTimed and she sort of carried me around the store and she showed me things. And, and she picked up a bunch of stuff and kind of like dropped it at my door for me, which is, it was really nice because, you know, one of the, the best ways to hang out with somebody is just to sort of exist simultaneously, you know? And that's one of the things that she and I used to do together is just, let's just go to the store and I've got some errands to run and we'll just hang out and talk and just exist simultaneously. So it was like a, like a nice little reminder of the old days. My favorite part, <laughs> She must have looked really nutty just like talking to her phone the whole time. And, but my favorite part was she had to sneak by a woman who was in the aisle. And as she went by, she said, excuse us. So <laughs> it just kind of tickled me. So I really appreciated that. That was nice. Okay. These guys I got from Amazon. This is Spike Nard. Uh, I had heard of it, but I didn't know much about it. Now this one here, I have some concerns about because apparently there's two spike nards. There's an American spike nard, and then there's another spike nard. Now the American spike nard is a relative supposedly of ginseng, and the other spike nard is a relative of honeysuckle, I think. And this is the American spike nard. Now that concerns me because this is not a class on American cooking and you know, during the time period that we're gonna be cooking from, there was no America. So is this the right thing? I don't know. Uh, supposedly it has 
a scent and a flavor very much uh, like root beer, like a cross between licorice and uh, sarsaparilla, I believe. Um, and people would make something very like root beer from it. So I'm excited to see what it smells like. Hmm. That is very difficult to describe. I, I apologize for that. It is very difficult to, to describe. I mean, there is a degree to which it just smells like wood shavings. And something a little bit peppery, but I'm very, I'm really looking forward to trying this out. Hopefully this will work for my purposes. I guess we'll find out. So this is hyssop. Now this is an herb that I definitely was familiar with. I haven't used it as a fresh herb, but having worked in uh, health food stores and with, you know, with herbs for most of my life, uh, I've definitely seen this in a lot of formulas and I've seen this in pills but I haven't tasted it or cooked with it or anything like that. Uh, it's supposed to have a sweet scent and a warm, bitter taste. That's definitely a sweet scent. That is definitely sweet. What's weird is it looks like they look exactly the same. And I was like, did they just send me like some, some sawdust and they're like ha ha look at this stupid idiot like we'll just send her anything in a bag and I feel bad like it's a joke I mean, I'm, I'm no no offense meant to this company I'm sure they're wonderful people and they would never ever do a thing like that it smells a little bit like sage which I didn't expect it's it's in the mint family but I definitely smell something a little bit like sagey it kind of makes me wish I had some turkey oh I really like that I'm, I'm looking forward to finding other things to do with this. If you'd like to see what hyssop looks like as a plant, it looks like that as a little baby. I, I mean, it was an act of pure optimism, honestly, to buy uh, little baby plants and just hope that they would grow big enough to eat within like a week to a week and a half. Was it a great decision? I'm not sorry. I'll just put it that way. I got these from a really great company. I, I discussed them in the other uh, in the other video. I will link to them in the, the description as well. I'm really happy with their their quality. They arrived very well packaged and totally safe. No, yeah, it just smells like a plant in some dirt. So the last couple things I got, I got from the Spice House. I've bought a couple things from them before. I like the fact that if they have something in a flat pack, it ships for free, even if you only buy one. And sometimes I only buy, uh, you know, I only want one of something. So I got some coriander seeds. I already had coriander ground, uh, but they specified that you wanted to have the whole seeds, which fun fact, coriander seeds are not actually seeds. They're little bitty berries that are dried and we just call them seeds because they, I mean, they do look like it. There was some confusion this morning because, uh, you know, in the United States, uh, we have coriander as a spice and we have cilantro as the herb plant. Whereas in England, uh, which is where this class is being taught from, uh, it's all coriander. So when they say coriander, it could mean either one. And we're always assuming this, but I, I think that they tend to assume cilantro when they're talking about that. So there was a little bit of confusion about that uh, and the class does definitely use a lot of both. I'm a big fan of coriander. It's got a really nice sort of a citrusy, spicy kind of flavor to it. I especially like it, um, like if you ever have a really good uh, pumpkin pie and you taste something, just like like a hint of, you're like, what is that, like, a, like orange peel, like something slightly citrus, that's, that's coriander. Oh, it smells like the nicest oranges with just a little something spicy behind it. And then the last thing from them is Grains of Paradise. I have wanted to try Grains of Paradise for so long. It's sort of a type of pepper. It looks like that. Uh, it sort of is and isn't. Let's see. Oh, it's got a nice little quote right on here. They were entirely different from black peppercorns and in my mind, incomparably better. Amanda Hesser said of Grains of Paradise in the New York Times, related to cardamom. It's in the ginger family, I believe, but closely related to cardamom. These seeds are sweet and spicy, but buttery with a hint of lavender and juniper. Mix them with black peppercorns as a seasoning or use them in peppernut cookies and see if you agree. So I've been hearing for a long time 
about how fancy these guys are. And now I have an excuse to buy them. Interesting. It definitely, it definitely smells spicy, but also earthy and, oh, I don't know. I can't wait to see what this tastes like. Like I kind of want to just sort of bite one. I mean, like who's gonna stop me? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I see where they're going with the lavender and the juniper, like, mmm, that's a, mmm, hello. It's a really interesting and complex flavor. And it does have like a little bit of a bite to it, which is kind of nice. So that's it for this little group of stuff, okay? I have more stuff to show you. I have so much more stuff to show you, but I don't want to overload you in one massive video. Anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I am really looking forward to showing you some of the things that I make and seeing how they how they come out and trying out some of these new ingredients and spices and herbs and all these, these fun new things. So I'm really happy that we can all learn something together. So please remember to like and subscribe. Uh, if you wanna share this, please do. Um, every new subscriber makes me super happy. So, you know, it's always very, very appreciated. And as always, thank you for hanging out and I hope I see you next time. Bye. Hey, turn up the caramello and chisel on the shizney. It's time for me to walk. Let me introduce myself. I'm Gina Perito. My pants are made of leather. I find a hot